then forge solutions that can be developed and put in place within that context. Uh, that's the only point I wanted to make. The sovereign, they, 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 uh, there was a man who was a social critic for the Baltimore Sun who said for every problem of human events, human affairs, there is a solution that is simple, quick, and wrong. Uh, <laughs> let's, in thinking about these issues, think it through, consider the pros and cons, and this is what you're doing, of course. I would say only to you with respect to the University of Pennsylvania, where I was a member of that faculty for 39 years, I can tell you Penn did not have sovereignty, but because of the people associated with the University of Pennsylvania, the board of trustees and the rest of them, they seized the time to buy up all that land, which now is University City Science Center and the rest of that. They started that in the late 1960s, and you see where they are. It is very interesting to me when you talk about policy and power relationships that Temple was never able to do that. Drexel is now only tiptoeing toward doing that, building on what Penn was able to do. The Salle hasn't been able to do that. Uh, St. Joe's, which is split between Philadelphia and Montgomery County, is with, so, so there are limitations to all of these kinds of strategies. I just want to support that. No, I got that. I, yeah. I think for me the point is the concept of having social determinism where the community actually feels like they have ownership. When you talk about, I live in a very gentrified neighborhood of Grace Ferry. Over the past 12 years, yeah. it has drastically changed. And my neighbors, I've seen them die off and sell off their properties because they can't afford it. Yeah. And part of it is it's being done to them. Nobody call, comes in there and says, what would you like to have happen in the community? It's done to them. Yeah. So that. Isn't that, that it, your responsibility as a CDC? You, are you point. stating to the world and your community that we are here to help revitalize this community if you are not in a very authentic and responsible way ensuring that the residents of your community own the community, own the plan, and are organized, then you are doing it to them, right? They're not doing it for themselves along with you, right? So this really is, a, in, the, in the neighborhoods in which we're talking about, it's about helping the community build capacity, help invest in leadership, and, and really help them develop and determine their future and facilitate that. When this week I was at a youth summit with Ru, and there was, I'm, I'm reading through the notes, and there was this note from a, a young person that said, what I've learned here is that we need to come together, when something happens, we need to come together, and we need to make sure we tell it to somebody very powerful so that something gets done. So it's really about helping communities be, or become organized, develop their voice, their aspirations, so that they know and they can say it to somebody very powerful so that the things that they want, they get. And I'll, I'll just say that I think that's one of the things that's on the platform of equitable development, this inclusion and in helping build capacity within our communities to create a voice. So Rick has told me that I need to uh, wrap up. Um, we will work on getting future panels together about this issue or subsets of this issue. And we're gonna all stick around for a couple of minutes. Yeah, as many of us as possible to answer some questions. Thank you. Thank you.